about in a second. OK. So data are the observations, such as notes, surveys, or observations, collected by scientists in the field. And often, actually, when I think of data, I don't know about any of you, I usually think, <laughs> as sad as this is, I usually think of um, something that looks like this. Like an Excel sheet with rows and columns, where the rows are um, individuals that we're studying and the columns are qualities about those individuals, right? And while this is what I think of, and I would be, wouldn't be surprised if many of you would think of when you think of data, this isn't, this isn't sort of, this is just an example of data. It could really be anything. It could be photos. It could be lab notes that a chemist takes. It's a very general term. <clears throat> and the cool thing about statistics is that we are the study, <clears throat> the study of data, um, which means we get to study a lot of different types of data and there's all these cool different subfields within statistics about how we handle different ways that, I guess, different um, forms that data can take. So the next definition is the titular thing, statistics. It is the study. of how best to collect analyze and draw conclusions from data So this is a more general and precise way of saying we are the study, we are the people who study data in whatever form it may or it may take. <clears throat> so we can put statistics in the context of the following general process of investigation. And this general process is going to fuel a lot of our conversation in the coming days. So I'm going to say general. One, we have identify a question or problem. Two, collect relevant data on the topic. Three, analyze the data. And four, form a conclusion. So in this class, we are going to mostly be focusing on these three. The first one, I might actually leave up to you. The world is your oyster, so you should decide on what interests you, what your own questions are, and develop the problems for yourself. <clears throat> but once you do so, we can help you um, figure out the answers to those questions in a very um, logically sound way. <clears throat> we'll also discover that people seem to be good at one, three, and four, but Two is something a lot of people aren't that good at. Um, and I really hope to show you how we can be good and well-reasoned whenever we collect our data, because a lot of people do it in such a way that leads to incorrect conclusions. So. Let's move forward with an example.
Right. So this is a stent. And it's a surgical implant that you put in a vein. Um, and the idea is, or I guess it's postulated, that this implant will reduce the chance of you getting a stroke. Um, so this is a new technology that was developed by scientists. They thought, hmm, maybe this will work. Um, and they are now interested and this is the question of interest. They are interested in do stents. I hope I'm saying that right, stents, stents, probably stents. Reduce the risk of stroke in certain at-risk patients. <clears throat> so this is our question. This is what we want to know. <clears throat> and what we are going to do is we're going to move on to collecting data that can answer our question, whether or not this is a good idea, whether or not we should be doing this procedure on people who are at risk, stroke, at risk of getting a stroke to lower their risk. So that brings us on to the second point, collect relevant data. So what we did um, is we took 451 patients who volunteered for this, mind you, which we'll talk about voluntary response pretty soon. But we took 452 patients and we divided them. Did I spell divide right? Um, them into two groups. treatment in which they got the standard medical treatment that we would give to anyone. As well as having a stent implanted and the control in which they were not given a stent and they were just given the standard medical treatment. Right? <clears throat> so after collecting our data, well, after setting up this experiment, we watched these 451 patients for a whole year. We got this. So we're actually just gonna be looking at, these are the same patients. We watched them after 30 days and then and recorded the number of people who got strokes. And then we also watched them for the full year, year and reported the number of them that got strokes. So how do we read this table? Um, <clears throat> the treatment group is here. And of the treatment group, 45 of them got strokes after a full year at some point in that year. And 179 of them did not. Seems intuitive. In the same in the same vein, <laughs> so maybe I'm the only one who gets that. Um, <laughs> for the control group, 28 of them got a stroke, and um, <clears throat> 199 of them did not. <clears throat> so what I want to do here is actually a bit of a test. It didn't actually work all that well in my last class, but I have a poll. And it should happen through Zoom. So let me know if you see it. But I think I've just launched it. Yeah, I've launched a poll. Do people see it in Zoom? Yes. Thank you.
So last time I did it, everyone could see it, but I couldn't see the responses, but everyone else could see the responses when I posted it. So I'm, I'm wondering if that's gonna happen again. And if that does happen again, I might switch to a different polling software in the future. So we wanna know, I'm asking how, I'm, according to this table, just to sort of gauge our understanding of it, how many um, subjects were in the control group? And I'll give us like 15 more seconds. Okay, let's see if we can get this to work. To end the poll. Okay. Can you all see the breakdown? Yeah, okay. I cannot, <laughs> which is why, oh goodness, my iPad blanked out, um, which is why I don't think I'm gonna use the software in the future. Can somebody tell me <laughs> what, what the breakdown is? <laughs> Um, 92% said 227, 0% said 224, 4% said 46, and 4% 4 said 378. All right, very nice. Thank you, thank you. Um, was that Olivia? Thank you, Olivia. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so 90% uh, of you are correct. Uh, the way we would read this table, which, you know, it's very encouraging. You, you all seem to get it. Um, The way we read this table is in the control group, um, 28 were got strokes, 199 did not get strokes. So adding both of those together, the total number who were just considered, the total number in the experiment is 28 plus 199, which is 227. Note, this is kind of a repeat of this data. This is the same people that we saw after a year. We're just also checking in on them after 30 days. And if you were to add these two numbers together, 13 and 114, that would also be 227. So there are indeed 227 in the control group. And note also, this is what we would call an unbalanced study because I think that there are only 224 in the treatment. <clears throat> So there were a different amount, number of subjects in the treatment than in the control is the micro point I'm attempting to make. All right, we have one other, we have, um, I have two other little definitions I wanna talk about and then that's actually going to wrap up this lecture. It was intentionally short um, and I'll have another, I'll give us a little bit more time for questions at the end in case anyone's having any trouble with WebAssign or Sakai or anything. Um, <clears throat> so this example with our stents is an example of an experimental study. Um, an experimental study is um, one where we impose a condition that may or may not have altered the data. So in this example, our condition is stents. We impose the treatment where we gave some people stents and we gave some people who weren't stent, <laughs> we gave some people stents and for others, we didn't give them stents. And we are interested in seeing if there is a difference in the rate of stroke between the two groups, right? So we've imposed a condition and we wanna see how the condition changed rate of stroke. That's an example of an experimental study. In contrast, 
I'm gonna <clears throat> put my little micro example back on here. In contrast to an experimental study, we have an observational study. So in this example, I believe it is, um, these are all students. So maybe we'll say undergraduate students. And what we have done here is we have just collected information on each of the undergraduate students. We have not imposed any sort of treatment. We are merely observing. So um, being a little bit more formal. An observational study is one where we simply collected the data on something that was already happening. So in this case, these people were in school, they had a writing level, they had a major. We did not come in and assign them writing levels or tell them what majors to have. We simply came in, looked at what was happening, wrote it down and then walked away. <laughs> and that's the difference between these two studies. Um, <clears throat> we are going to experience each of these in this class. So I'm merely just presenting them to you now, so you know when I refer to an experimental study, an observational study, you'll have an idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, so that is actually all I wanted to go over today. Um, I intentionally wanted to leave as much time as I could for questions and logistic, um, figuring out the logistics of this class. I will say that, um, I will reiterate actually, that a lot of this beginning stuff is just gonna be definitions, but don't get used to that. Um, we are very quickly going to be moving into more quantitative stuff. Um, and I believe that is all I wanted to do today.